it is, the pesto, the, the genuine article, the authentic Italian recipe for Ligurian-style pesto. Let's take a taste. I made it this time with, uh, with fusilli. It's absolutely delicious. Pasta perfectly cooked. You taste the basil. You taste a little bit of that olive oil. The Parmesan is there. The garlic is hidden in the background, but you, you can taste it. The pine nuts lend a creaminess to it. This is so good. I want you to make it. It's easy to do, but there are certain things that you need to do. There are steps that you have to follow in order to make it right. And I'm gonna teach you how that's done. So let's go into the kitchen and let's make some pesto. First things first, we're gonna need some basil. Uh, I buy mine at the local grocery store and uh, take the leaves off, take the stems, and wash it very, very well. You can see that uh, there's still going to be some stems in there. There's nothing that you can do, but about uh, 30 to 40 leaves for this particular recipe. And we're also going to use uh, olive oil. I tend to have my olive oil in a cruet like this. And uh, I have a few things, actually, believe it or not, that I want to tell you about olive oil and also about basil. Uh, you may find it interesting. So here I am with some more information on that. In Liguria, where pesto comes from, you have to realize there's a couple of things. Number one, they use a different type of a basil than we have here in America. What we have here is much larger leaves, and they're very dark green. Over there, they're much younger, they're smaller. And so the pesto that they make is going to be a, of a somewhat of a lighter color, more of a lime green than uh, or uh, than it is a very very dark green that you saw me make today also the olive oil that they use over there is Ligurian olive oil it's far more fruity than olive oil from the rest of Italy and it also has a very low acidity level now I use 100% California olive oil because I'm from California and uh, in this country we make some of the finest olive oil in the entire world and it's held to very high standards. Number one, you know it's fresh. And number two, you know it's 100% olive oil. And number three, you know it's produced all here. Uh, in Italy, they can buy olives from all different kinds of countries, Tunisia, Spain, Greece. And if they're pressed in Italy, they can write on the bottle, product of Italy. That's not fair, if you ask me. Also, this olive oil can sit around in warehouses and become rancid. And by the time you get it here, if you don't use it up really quickly, it just goes bad. More importantly, sometimes they substitute 10, 20, 25 percent of the olive oil with a lower quality olive oil or a lower quality oil. And there's no way you're going to be able to tell. If you've purchased olive oil from Italy, chances are you've been had at least once or twice. I'm not saying it happens all the time, and I'm not saying that every producer does it, but you're better off buying 100% California olive oil and using products made in our country as opposed to importing stuff that's not going to be as fresh or as good as what you can get here in your own backyard. Obviously, since this is a pesto, we're going to be using pine nuts. These are not European pine nuts. The European pine nuts are a lot longer. They're elongated sort of teardrop shaped and they are as all are, are all uh, pine nuts they're individually hand harvested so that's what makes them extremely expensive we also are going to use parmesan cheese this is the genuine article parmigiano reggiano and there is no substitute for that we've got a clove of garlic and also some salt And that's about it. That's what you need to make pesto. 
Now, since this is a genuine pesto, we're going to be using a mortar and pestle, believe it or not. This one is an Italian one, and the one on the left is one from Mexico. Now, there's a difference. This is marble, and the pestle is made out of wood, so that these two, the wood and the marble, when they rub up against one another, it's not going to cause the marble to come into the pesto. Whereas with the Mexican one, it's two of the same volcanic rock rubbing against each other, and it has a tendency to potentially get some of that volcanic rock inside of whatever you're making. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but in Italy, they're only going to be using marble with the wooden pestle. So now let's start with the garlic. You take one clove and I'm going to cut the, the garlic in half and we're going to remove the center parts. And the reason for that is is that it, it is said that those center parts are extremely strong. But we want the garlic to be kind of in the background. We don't want it to be this big garlicky flavor along with basil. Basil is the main character here, and garlic is a supporting character, has a supporting role. So we take the centers of the garlic out, and we'll bring the, uh, the mortar in here, and we're going to start with some salt. And this is very, very coarse salt, and it's going to help grind the garlic, kind of in the classic way that you see some of these chefs put the garlic on the cutting board and then they grind the garlic with the with some salt same idea and we're going to take maybe one half to one and three quarters of the clove here and put it in in fact there may even be a little bit too much but we're going to grind it now the mortar and pestle the way it's properly used is to grind like this. Now you see me twisting the mortar like that. That also helps. But it is a grinding action that you want to use. You don't want to go up and down and crush like what I just demonstrated there as what not to do. All right. So we're turning the mortar itself and we're taking the pestle and we're grinding the pestle into the mortar and of course consequently whatever's inside also gets ground down so we're using the coarse salt to make a paste essentially out of the garlic and the entire pesto is also going to be a paste now we'll add some pine nuts I'm kinda heavy on the pine nuts I really love pine nuts I could eat them out of the bag uh, without stopping, believe it or not. That's how much I love them. They're extremely expensive. I think for the one bag, uh, five or six ounces, I pay about $10. But the reason for that is because they are each individually must be hand harvested, kind of like saffron uh, is hand harvested and the most expensive spice in the world. Sometimes, depending on the price of gold, more expensive than gold. I don't think that pine nuts are more expensive than gold, but regardless, they are very expensive. Now you notice how I'm grinding the pine nuts here into a paste. All right, Take your time, uh, twist the mortar like you see me doing there. That's why they have those little handles there. And if you need to switch hands like I do occasionally, um, even though I do this for a living, it's not exactly... Uh, as you get older anyway, not exactly the funnest uh, on your joints. Not that I'm that old, but um, after working with your hands your entire life, it uh, you, you have to switch it up a little bit. So now you can see that the, uh, the pine nuts are totally ground up here. In fact, we're going to do it a little bit more into a paste. And that's what you want. Notice we haven't added any olive oil yet, and uh, we haven't added any cheese or anything. Next come the basil leaves. And I've got about 40 to 45 different basil, you know, separate basil leaves. I didn't count them, but that's about what they are. Uh, 
to make enough for say four portions of uh, fusilli with the pesto like we're making today and so the same idea is true you just grind away little by little at the basil and if you need to scrub or take some of it off um, in a minute I think I'm going to be using the the knife to uh, to scrape some of it off of the pestle that'll happen too where it will get uh, it'll get jammed up on the side of the pestle and you're going to want to remove it just like I did there all right but take your time with it you don't want to uh, you don't want to bang down on it you want to grind it all in together and then you continue to add basil leaves until you've exhausted all of the basil and again like I said it's about 30 or 40 different leaves it's gonna be more than 30 it's gonna be about it's gonna be more than 40 it depends too if they're very large leaves um, it, you know it's gonna be a lot more than the very small leaves that they actually use in Liguria they use a very very young and uh, almost not yellow but a very light green uh, basil plant over there and so I add more and eventually we will get to the end of the basil and then begin adding in our Parmesan cheese so let's speed up the action here so you're not bored out of your mind and you continue to add the leaves and grind and to clean off the pestle and then at the end when all of the basil is incorporated you're going to get something that approximates somewhat of a paste here or that is essentially is essentially your pesto now we haven't added the cheese yet and we'll do that in about two seconds now it's important that you freshly grate your cheese to buy the pre-grated cheese from the store is to make a complete mistake so you take the fine uh, side of the grater and you grate the cheese now it's time to add our cheese let me add it a little bit at a time it's finely grated so it'll incorporate rather quickly and rather easily and the same rules apply you want to kind of work it in and at the same time continue to grind up the leaves you're gonna get if, especially if you're using American style leaves they're gonna be a l there's gonna be some stringiness to it which is okay but along with the with the grinding of it um, it will help to eliminate all of that stringiness now you add the rest of the cheese and work that in as well the next step of course after you uh, add the cheese is going to be to add the olive oil now you see how the cheese is sort of soaking up uh, the the wetness essentially of the basil and making it more of a solid mass and you see me also it looks like I'm uh, I'm pressing down that I'm I'm pounding the uh, the pestle into the pesto but I'm really not I'm just scraping down the sides so after the Parmesan cheese has all been incorporated you continue to work the pesto into a paste like what you see here until it's all incorporated and smooth and then now we're gonna add our olive oil now you don't want to add olive oil the way that you're typically used to adding olive oil so it's just a soupy mess the olive oil is an antioxidant what it does is essentially it coats the pesto and stops it from turning black so you just add a little bit of olive oil in small drizzles like what you see here you do not need to add a lot it should not be a soup rather it should still be what we've been talking about it should be a paste okay a homogeneous mass 
that will come together and you'll see what I mean in just a second as I work the oil into the pesto I now take a spatula and clean everything off that's as important because you want to get everything I mean you've done all of this work to grind the pesto or to grind everything down together and so now we want to get every morsel of this pesto uh, together waste not want not and there's going to be a little bit you can see how now I'm going to finalize the the, uh, the grinding and maybe look and see where we need to, to do a little bit more but that's basically it we're almost done and it's taken a lot to get to this point but ultimately at the end of the day the basil is kept at a lower temperature so it doesn't burn like it would in a blender or a food processor and the flavor and the texture of this pesto is going to be completely different than what you're used to finding in the stores or the restaurants or even if you make it yourself in a in a machine right you should uh, aim to particularly make this particular type of pesto in a mortar and pestle at least once or twice and you should own a mortar and pestle for other reasons which as I release more videos will become apparent so now we're basically done take a little bowl I've taken the same bowl that I had the cheese in there and uh, you put the pesto in there you notice how it is a paste and it is a homogeneous mass that sticks together that's exactly what you want in a pesto and now we're going to boil water for our pasta in a regular saucepan I pour four cups of water turn the heat on and bring the water to a boil. It'll help if you cover the pot with something, a sheet pan or a if you have a cover for your sauce pot. And now once the water is boiling, that's when you add the salt. You don't want to add the salt when the water is cold because it will eventually pit your pan, believe it or not. All right? So that was 2 teaspoons of salt, regular salt. You don't want to use, I don't care what they say, oh, use the big salt, use the this salt, but just use two teaspoons of salt, regular salt, per four cups of water. That's it. We now add our pasta. The box is about a pound of pasta, and we're going to use half of the pesto. So I use half of the box. The pesto is enough for about four portions and so I pour about eight ounces and give it a good stir you don't have to constantly be stirring the pasta it only only until the point where the water gels the starches in the pasta that way it won't stick now we're going to add half of the pesto into a bowl because we are not going to have any heat on the pesto after the pasta is done cooking so you must cook the pasta till the end till it's al dente or to the point where you like it and then you're going to add the pasta into the pesto once it's fully cooked to your liking all right because we're not going to add any heat at all you don't want to cook the pesto you don't want to add the pesto in and finish the uh, the pasta the way that uh, we traditionally do with other pastas once it's cooked it's cooked and you shouldn't apply any heat to the pesto. It's going to lose its liveliness. That's another reason why it's so much better when you make it yourself and at home. Now you notice that we're mixing it up and we're going to add some of that cooking water. That's why I add so little water with so much pasta because I want those starches to come in and we're going to, instead of it being a gloppy mess, we're going to use the pasta water to thin out the pesto so that it properly coats all of the fusilli in this case. See, I add a little bit of extra water to ensure that, you know, we're having, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's extending it enough. Now we're going to add a little bit of olive oil to give it a shininess and mix it in so that it's one homogeneous mass. And I'm using my tweezers here to mix in 
and you'll notice that now it is extended but all of the fusilli is covered beautifully in pesto with that raw oil it's going to add another dimension of flavor now you don't want to add a lot of oil just a little bit to add to make it creamy it's going to mix in also with the water and form a temporary emulsion which gives it a what they call cremoso or a creaminess to the pasta and you'll notice that I don't have any extra pesto it's not swimming in pesto in fact as I play the, this pasta up you'll see that in the bowl if you take a look to the left that there's really very little uh, pesto left in the bowl now see I tried to get some of the sauce it just didn't work we could have taken a spatula and scraped it all out but that's not the idea we want it to just be perfectly coated and when it goes in the uh, in the on the plate that it is it's just perfect there's no extra there's just enough and of course we grate a little bit of Parmesan on top of that now I encourage you to taste the pasta before you add Parmesan so you'll understand what it's supposed to taste like without the added cheese cheese also helps to hide flavor essentially in this case just a little bit enhances everything and I use a microplane grater because it's so much easier to do that and of course voila you have now pesto a Ligurian style pesto that you made yourself how sweet it is By the way, if you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell button so that you'll get uh, confirmation or an alert when I post new videos. And I would appreciate it. I'm trying to get to uh, I'm trying to get to a million subscribers. We'll see if that's going to happen, uh, but we're going to try. Thank you. When you're making pesto. You must use Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. There's really no way around it. That cheese cannot be replicated anywhere else in the world. They've tried, and it just doesn't come close. You don't need a lot of it, as you'll see in the video, but go ahead and spend the money and get some of that cheese. You don't need a lot again, like I said, but it will, it'll be a world of difference compared to what you're going to find off the shelves domestically. That's one of those products that in America, it just doesn't compare to what you get when you, uh, when you, imp when you buy the imported genuine Parmigiano Reggiano.